all words are constructs behind every word is thought mental activity there is no word whose definition does not depend on other words you cannot ever have a single word it will be absurd that's the problem with concepts thoughts and words in which concepts have been crystallized they cannot stand on their own there is no independence there what is a concept that which depends on another concept for its definition what is a word that which depends on another word what is a thought that which depends on another thought and at the center of all of these is the i sense not the pure eye sense but the eye sense that has gathered itself through sensory experience and physical processes if that be the constitution of the usual i sense then all thoughts words concepts around it will have their origin in just the body without the body no i without the i no concept all concepts then become subservient to what the i is composed of and this as we said is the false eye it's a gathered eye some of it comes from the body some of it comes from time some of it comes from random experiences
all mental activity is then very helplessly dependent dependent on the constitution of the false eye thought is nothing that has a value of its own we always have chains of thoughts you cannot have a thought if it is not associated to the previous rung of the chain impossible a totally free piece of thought if there could be one would be a ridiculous absurdity thought is always a progression what you are thinking right now is dependent on what you were thinking a minute back or what you are thinking of right now is dependent on something that just happened 5 seconds back take both these cases if thought is dependent on the previous piece of thought then the previous piece of thought is dependent on the one that came before it and ultimately all of that is coming from the eye sense therefore thought is existentially tied to the i wherever the i is thought cannot go too far from it like a tethered animal we talk of freedom of thought don't we that's a very common phrase that's like talking about the freedom of the tethered cow yes it can have some freedom but not much and the center has already decided how far the cow can go similarly the eye has already decided how far the thought can go in the other case even if thought is a reaction to a happening who is the experiencer of that happening the i so again thought has no freedom even in reacting to an external happening external as in external to the body some random small projectile hits you will you have the same thought as this person if the same thing happens to him no i throw this thing at you i throw this thing at him the two of you are unlikely to get exactly the same thoughts why because thought is not just a function of this thought is much more a function of the one who received the impact within otherwise the happening is just the same the same towel thrown at him same towel thrown at him but the mental reaction is likely to be different 
The towel is the same, the reaction is different. Why? Because there is somebody mediating the happening and the reaction. There is a mediator. Who is the mediator? The I is the mediator. So again here thought has no freedom. Thought is bound to the I. If thought is bound to the I, thought cannot go too far from the I. We talked of the cow. Even if the cow is given a long rope, can it fly? Not, not possible. then thought too cannot violate the dimension of the self. When I say self, I mean the usual accumulated false self. Impossible for thought to do that. We do not realize that. Because the cow can roam endlessly even while being tethered, we get the false impression that thought has endless freedom. See, isn't the cow able to move continuously? Oh, the cow is just doing circles. Going round and round. Yes, there is a lot of movement, but the cow has not reached anywhere. We, we are unable to appreciate that. What we see is that there is no stopping the cow. Just as there is no stopping the endless thought process. So we get a feeling that the fellow within is free. Free because nobody can stop him. If, if there is somebody who cannot be stopped by anybody, you get the impression that the fellow is free. No? Similarly, can anybody come and stop your thinking? We think endlessly. We think endlessly. And that gives the impression that thought is free. It's not free. We are doing rounds. Not reaching anywhere. And even when we are doing those circles, at no point are we allowed to violate the dictums of the false center. Irrespective of where the cow is, can the distance between the cow and the center exceed the length of the rope? We do not see that. Endless movement fools us. We feel we are doing something. And that we are free to do something. There is no freedom. There is no freedom in thought. Thought is servile, helpless. Hmm? Similarly, don't you take care of the rope and the pin? Don't you ensure 
that the cow is never uh, strong enough to break the rope similarly thought too is never allowed by its center to violate the center itself if you have a calf what kind of rope do you use hmm? a normal thin kind of rope would do hmm? if you have a bull oh you'll bring a thick one what is always ensured is that the animal is never able to get away the animal should never be able to violate the center of movement right you can keep moving but you will never violate the center that's the condition correct the same condition is on thought you can keep moving but sorry sir you will never move in a way that uproots the center itself which means that thought can never expose the falseness of i thought can never uproot the false ego one thing thought can never break the rope which means thought is not free that is the first thing we got that right thought is not free thought cannot fly away second thing thought must respect the center, center. no cow is ever allowed to run away with the entire arrangement is she similarly thought is never allowed to uproot the ego that's the arrangement within extending the argument you should write thought exists to serve the ego not expose or uproot it hmm. but the ego is false but the ego is false and thought exists to serve the ego and the ego is false so thought exists to serve falseness we think that by thinking more and more we'll be able to reach the truth sir thought is designed to never reach the truth thought is designed to protect its own center thought simply does not have the capacity the brief the power to uproot its own center just like the cow you may keep thinking endlessly about yourself you will never know your truth because thought itself is coming from the false thought exists to serve its master the ego so thought is wonderful as far as furthering the flimsy 
superficial interests of the ego is concerned, thought has proven to be wonderful. Thought has proven to be a great servant to the ego. If the ego wants something, if there is a desire that the ego has, not the ultimate desire, desire of the usual kind. If there is a desire that the ego has, we have seen thought is ever ready to please its master and fulfill the master's desire. The room is too hot and humid. What does thought hmm? like the proverbial jinn bring you immediately? Here is AC, my Aka. You ask for it and thought will bring it to you. What is the air conditioner a product of? Human thought. Right? And that is the reason why our rabbits have been unable to invent or discover much. So that's an exaggeration. They haven't discovered anything. Hmm? The human system, not that we are wonderfully blessed or something, just the human physical system, physical. Uh, which is a thing of evolution. You evolved in a different way compared to the rabbits, that's all. Not that you are finer products of God or something, no. The human system is such that it has the capacity for thought. Even animals think, not that they don't think. But the thought chain in their brains does not go too far. If you read upon that, it is very interesting. Thought becomes more and more productive as its chain elongates. Then you are able to conceptualize and relate this concept with that one. And from that come all philosophy, science and all the fine things that uh, we relate and consume. No? Even animals think but their chain of thought does not go beyond a few pieces. After that, they get confused. So, I, I saw that particular post on the community. There's this cat. Huh? And you, you, you show one finger to it and the cat says, ah, I'll bite. And you show two fingers and the cat is ah. And you show four fingers and the cat is now dumbstruck. What to do? And the fellow said, that's like facing MCQs in the test. Four of them. And all of them look equally lucrative. Which one to go for? So one finger... The cat doesn't have to think much, so she's okay with it. Two, this much her 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 thought process can probably accommodate. So even two, she is okay. The moment you show four fingers, the cat is stupefied. Human beings can extend this number four to four million, four billion, and that's why cats are where they are, and we are where we are. So thought has been humble, very productive, extraordinary servant to us. Thought has given us language, culture, civilization, all of it is product of thought. But thought cannot give you freedom. Thought cannot liberate you from who you are. Thought only serves you as you are. Please understand.
thought serves you exactly as you are. Even if thought helps you improve, it will help you improve as per your demand. It will not take you beyond yourself. The little problem is, as human beings, we are contented only when we go beyond ourselves. The cat has no such problem. The cat is very fine just being a cat. No human being is fine being a human being. And that's why human beings over the history have tried to become everything that they can, including cats, rats. Have you ever found a cat trying to be a rat? But look at human beings. They want to be everything that's possible to be had. And none of that suffices. So, the jury is still out and will remain that way on thought. What do we call thought? A wonderful servant or a criminal distraction? You can keep thinking all the time, the more you think, the more thought will be able to bring you the next object of your desire. You know, on one hand, that's fulfillment of desire. On the other hand, that's also criminal distraction. Because your time has been taken away. You have been kept in a fool's paradise. Thought gives you a lot of false positives. Yes, something great is happening. When actually what you want is freedom from yourself. Thought brings you more ingratiation. Even as you remain as yourself. Crude analogy would be you are sitting at a restaurant the menu card is extensive let's say thousands of items but you are sick the heart is aching. But you are also gluttonous. Desirous. Easily seduced by the goodies of life, like food, there is a heartache. There is something terribly wrong with the core itself. And thought is the waiter at the restaurant. Thought looks at you. Finds you a little queasy. Thought says, fine. This is the latest dish from Italy. And as you relish that dish, 
you forget your heartache for a while. The relief doesn't last. Soon after you are again squirming, this discomfort, something is happening. What does thought do? Says you just put your finger anywhere on the card. Five minutes is all I'll take. And it brings you the next goodie. Thought keeps fulfilling your endless desires one after the other or at least promises to do so. If a desire is not being fulfilled, thought says, I am attempting, I am finding out a way. I am thinking, sir, uh, bring, bring me this particular one. Sir, right now it's not available, but I'll get it made for you. It will take a little longer than usual, 40 minutes, but I'll get it for you. Don't they do that? And you say, fine, I'll, I'll wait, 40 minutes is okay. Either I'll get it within 5 minutes or I'll get it in the future, that's thought. It's available and I'm finding out a way to pick it up or I'm arranging for it in the future. And just as all this is happening, your heart is crying. I said the jury is still out. It's possible that the doctor ultimately just sadly shrugs his shoulders and says, you know, uh, too late. Why couldn't you bring him in half an hour earlier? He could not be brought in because the servant was busy fulfilling his desires. And the servant is an able one. He does fulfill desires. Desires of the... Yeah. Get me a little more seasoning, please. Desires of that nature. Getting it. But since thought is skilled at fulfilling desires or at least attempting to fulfill desires, the ego relies on thought a lot just as a master relies on a faithful servant. The ego leans on thought heavily. You look at people, you know, I am thinking, but I thought... I went by my thought. The thought is the minister, the wazir, the prime counsellor, the trusted friend of the ego. If there is a problem, I will consult thought. Bigger problem is Thought will never tell you anything beyond yourself. Thought is not meant to change your constitution. In some sense, thought is like your shadow. Depending on the position of the source of light, the shape, etc. of the shadow can change. Nevertheless, the shadow will remain true to the figure. And the shadow will remain tied to the feet. Similarly, thoughts come in all shapes and sizes, but they remain tied to your feet. Where you are, there your thought is. So never say, you know, my thought suggested me this particular action, hence I went ahead. No, thought cannot suggest you anything. <laughs> thought suggests to you what you have already suggested to thought because the thought is the servant, sir. If thought is telling you something, that something is what you have already told thought. Thought just echoes it back to you. 
with some garnishing. Can a servant tell a master something drastically unpleasant? Something like you don't deserve to be a master. Can a servant tell the master something as unpleasant as you are false? You don't deserve to be a master. Similarly, the thought has, does not simply have the capacity to bring the truth to the ego. Thought is all right when you want to solve a problem in mathematics. Thought is not all right when you want to live a fulfilled life. To the extent a fulfilled life involves solving problems in mathematics, thought is a useful servant. To the extent our fulfillment depends on temperature control in this room, thought is a useful servant. But we very well know that we are not sitting here to enjoy the right temperature or meticulous climate control. Or is that what brings you here? Huh? So the supreme stupidity then is to refer to thought in central matters of life. That's the reason the method for self-realization is self-observation. Not thinking about the self. You are asked to look at things as they are right now. Thinking about events that have now been left behind doesn't help you much. To observe something is to know it as it is happening right now. And that's what leads to self-knowledge. I have to watch it as it is happening right now. With no interference of thought whatsoever. I'm looking at you. Not thinking about you. That's observation. Atma Vlokan. I'm looking directly at you. Instantaneously, thought would require time when I would miss the bus. The happening would slip into the past. That's not observation. That's recollection. A lot of us just start recollecting instead of observing. Observation is like examining a patient. Recollection is like post-mortem. You could not do anything when he was alive. Now that he is gone, you are all over his body. To observe is to see the situation as it is right now. Not think about it. No, just see. Thought has its rightful place. 
but not in the domain we are concerned with right now. Are you getting it? It's very easy to forget. Your thought is your servant. No, no. That's too mild a way to put it. Your thought is an idiot's servant. First of all, a servant. On top of that, servant to an idiot. Who is the idiot? How much respect can you give to an idiot's servant? And if you give respect to an idiot's servant, who are you? But just too many of us prefer to go by our thoughts. You know, my viewpoint, my thought. I thought so. Mujhe aisa laga. And that's what brings all kinds of nonsense to you. You know, but I thought hard. That's like the cow running a marathon. Huh? Around the center, thinking it to be some stadium. You're getting it. The truth is not something to be attained, it is never distinct. It is lovelessness to try to approach truth through an intermediary. Hmm? Some idiots use some messenger even to send a flower or a love letter to the beloved. Don't have the guts. And they strongly believe that they might be slapped. The probability is high. So they want the messenger to run the risk. This is a great love affair in which no middleman is allowed. Facts are not even the door to truth. If you can be in instantaneous contact with the fact, here is the truth. You are in already. The door is flung open. The door is wide open. Actually, there never was a door at all. But we missed the bus. The thing is right there. But we don't show the love or the guts to approach it directly. What do we bring in between? Thought. The middleman. When you don't want to confront the truth, one thing you will have in ample measure is thought. Before every sentence, you will have to think for five minutes. I will send you a message and ask for a reply. For 20 minutes, the screen will show Sanjay is typing. 
and ultimately no message will arrive because he was just running round and round the false self to save hmm a particular species of quadrupeds hindi is far better i can simply say gadha but in english if i say he was running round and round to save his ass i mean gadha ko bachana is far more decent than saving the ass do that's exactly what i want to communicate hmm anupam why did you do what you do for 3 minutes first of all there is invention of language you can see the entire process of human evolution happening right in front of your eyes here is some organism from the jungle just beginning to learn language then comes the tribal he is able to utter a few incoherent words and then finally after 3 minutes comes some reply in a supposedly human language what is happening why can't there be spontaneity why because there is a lot of thought why because thought's purpose is to defend its center which is false thought exists to defend falseness therefore wherever you find a lack of spontaneity you must stand assured that there is a strong attempt to save defend and secure the false yes raga where were you the entire night uh, uh, the fact can be instantaneously uttered but story is take time to cook and you also have to remember the story otherwise the story coming from you will be very different from the story coming from them and the next morning your own story will change because your own memory is so unreliable do you see where thought is found so useful by the ego in escaping the fact in denying the truth you could extend this line to say that even all this that thought fetches its master as means of desire fulfillment are only things to deny the truth not that thought is useful to deny the truth only in matters of day to day integrity but everything that thought has brought man is in some way direct or indirect a means to deny the truth you see I, I, ideally i should be comforted only by the truth i should be happy only when liberated but thought can bring me some nice toy and i will become happy for a while so what has the toy meant to me it has meant denial of truth to me no we are, we are not saying we should not think we are examining 
the entire process of thought. Right? Now there can be two possibilities other than thought. Two, not one. We named just one and that is dangerous. We said there can be courageous, unafraid, instantaneous observation. That's one possibility. That's a beautiful one. But there is another one which is very dangerous, lower than thought, worse than thought. Which is to not to see at all and also not think. You see, in, in direct observation, there is no need to think because you are seeing in the moment itself without any use of time. Right? Better than that, higher than that. Higher than thought. So if someone is looking at something and then going back to his cave and then retrospectively collecting pieces of information and assimilating them as per his convenience, we said that's just recollection. There is nothing called retrospective observation. That's just recollection. So direct observation is better than recollection. Direct observation is better than huh, having thought as the intermediary. But there is a third and a far worse possibility. What is that? You neither think nor see. You just imagine. Imagine. No, you don't even recollect. See, even to recollect, there must at least be a photograph. There must at least be an imprint of the present, if not the present itself. The third possibility is, I neither saw, seeing is obviously lost on me, beyond my capacity. I didn't even think. To me, what comes as a dirty substitute to thought, not observation, but belief. I will not think. And that does not mean that I am seeing. I will not think. I will just shoot from the hip. And that is called unthinking. That is not thinking transcended. That is thinking betrayed. Not that you have gone beyond thought. You have not even thought. And that's why thought is no mean thing. Even thinking is a faculty that the uh, bulk of human beings hardly fully use. Most of us are unthinking people. We don't even think. What do we do? We imagine. We believe. If there is no one else to give us something to believe in, we simply cook up something. Just, just cook something up. I will show you an object you might never have seen. I will ask you what it is. In, in usual circumstances, nobody would say that he knows nothing about that object. You will cook something up. Something. And that something can be cooked up extremely quickly. Thought is needed, not even there. I show you, okay. What is this? And an almost instantaneous reply can come without knowing anything about this. That does not mean you have observed. That means you have not even thought. That does not mean, I repeat, that you have transcended thought. That means you have not even thought. You are so disrespectful towards life that you have just uttered something. Life came to you with a situation. The greatest response would have been 
observation lower than that i look at it then i try to match it with my past you know i think um, at least some effort is being made thought is not easy we don't have thinkers a plenty right only one out of 10 people really even thinks 9 out of 10 people will look at it and will give some random absurd ludicrous reply even without thinking and that's unfortunately what the entire field of spirituality has become masters taught us that thought is not the ultimate thing thought has to be transcended and what is the transcendence of thought instantaneous observation that's what the teacher has told us that thought is not the final thing what did we reduce that to we said okay that means thought is not needed so i can simply dream the master said you must exceed thought and what did we bring down that advice to we abandon thought we are not even thinking getting it now see what shri krishna is saying here it's a beautiful commentary on meditation and these two words beautiful when you think that's meditation when you observe that's meditation hmm and lower than both of these is imagination imagination mentation meditation hmm? chapter 2 verse 29 some look at the self atma as marvelous various approaches varied attitudes others speak of it as wonderful and others hear of it again as a wonder and then there are others who keep hearing and do not understand anything irrespective of what you say about the truth it's a violation because your words are coming from your mental activity the cow is not to use its time imagining about the lush green forest or the grassy plains the cow is to exert itself fully to break the rope remaining where the cow is it is extremely dishonest of it dishonesty towards its own condition it is extremely dishonest of it to just dream of green pastures now dreaming of those green pastures extensive grassy plains the cow can say oh you know those plains are infinite now technically she might be right probably but existentially she is a fraud 
remaining within your little loop you have used the word infinite shame on you technically you are right existentially you are a fraud look at your condition how dare you bring the word infinite to your lips and do words have objective or absolute meanings no the meaning of a word is not independent of the one uttering it the word infinite becomes very finite when uttered by you so now even technically you are wrong you have lost it both existentially and technically what does a cow a robed one at that an enslaved one know about infinity what right does a slave have to compose a poem on freedom you will say no but if he is a slave why can't he dream why can't he compose a poem because that's dishonest that time should have been used to challenge his slavery if he took 2 hours composing that poem that's dishonesty towards his condition those hours should have been used challenge his condition understand if the fellow has been fighting hard for freedom the entire week and on the weekend for 2 hours he composes a poem that might be possible i understand that but what about those who make no attempt to be free but keep singing of freedom those who keep themselves limited in all ways possible make no effort to challenge their limits but keep tossing words like unlimited and limitless as if those words come for free i'm asking is that not an existential fraud all concepts are very poor things they will not enrich your life they can fulfill some desires but they will not please your heart and since concepts are such poor things shri krishna is saying kindly do not reduce atma to a concept there are many who would take exception to this they will be outraged especially academics and philosophers they'll say no but atma is a concept no sir if atma is a concept then it is not useful we are not here to learn concepts we are here to be liberated if i take atma to be a concept then atma is a small thing within the mind and how can a small thing within the mind enable the ego to be free the mind is a slave to the ego if the atma is a concept then atma is a small thing owned by the slave of what use is a small thing owned by the slave to the master academically therefore even if brahm atman are concepts to you they should not be 
if they are concepts then you will come up with a definition won't you is there any concept that cannot be defined or expanded the moment you come up with a definition the game is over for you i often say one of the chief reasons behind india's decline over the last uh, 1200 years has been the abuse of the word atma it's been more than around 1200 years to acharya shankar and he very clearly very sharply very unambiguously brought out the unapproachable unthinkable nature of the true self it was very clear atma is not something you can write songs about create stories imagine fancies no it was very clear but after him the word atma got totally corrupted and polluted and that that coincides with the period of india's downfall please see exactly the period where india messed up with atma is the period of india's decline because india came up with the highest it's it's the most all philosophy stops there Ah, the unknowable, the unspeakable, the unthinkable. Full stop. And then we regressed. After the summit came the fall, and we started creating all kinds of stories about Atma and all kinds of Puranic literature came up. and said atma is doing this and atma is of this color and atma is of that size and atma flies and atma crawls and atma enters the womb and some you know some some of these great so called great philosophers also said that some atma oh, of course there are as many atmas as there are people some atmas are condemned to eternal suffering not that everyone is even qualified for liberation some atmas are so evil that they are meant to suffer eternally all this kind of nonsense about atma was peddled and that was taken as commentary on vedant and mind you that was the time of india's decline we lost it out in all ways possible how can you be excused when you have the highest and you corrupt it how can you be excused atma gets stained by your karmas atma shrinks atma expands and these people kept waxing eloquent on the atma endlessly just the ego trying to lay its dirty hands on the highest possible if somebody asks you can you name can you give one 
वन एंड ओनली वन सेंट्रल रीजन बिहाइंड इंडिया डिक्लाइन से द पीपल हु करप्टेड आत्मा दे आर द वंस रिस्पॉन्सिबल आत्मा देन देर इज परमात्मा देन देर इज जीव आत्मा के ऑस ऑफ ऑल काइंड एंड साइड बाय साइड दे ऑल्सो केप्ट सेंग आत्मा इज इमोर्टल द बॉडी डाइज आत्मा इज इमोर्टल If Atma is immortal, what is this thing that you talk of as flying from body to body and being barbecued in hell? No logic whatsoever, and we as Indians should be ashamed that we allowed this nonsense to pass. we didn't question it we didn't reject it we didn't call out the bluff we let the idiots rule even today atma has become the preferred word for any vague emotion that you have if there is something that you are unable to look at clearly you simply say oh this is atma evolution has gifted every organism with intuition if you just intuitively feel something you say oh it is coming from atma the fellow has some gastric trouble some gas problem and he says my atma is paining we keep writing these things and we don't even ask what is going on bhagwan unki atma ko apne charano mein sthan de what what is this what are you uttering don't you see the falseness the illogic the stupidity the contradiction it goes on and on when 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 a nation loses its philosophy it has lost its life we are not beasts and a nation is not a jungle we are human beings and a nation is built on a philosophical foundation if the philosophy itself gets rotten how will the nation not decline 